Today we're going to be looking at this a Pacer SSD. It's got no strings attached, just pure performance at 7,400 megabytes per second. On the front of the box, it's got the manufacturer's name of Pacer. It says it's an M.2 PCIe Gen 4 x 4 SSD. It's the AS2280Q4U. We have the 2 terabyte version, but they do have other sizes available. On the sides and the back of the box, it does mention the read speed is 7,400 megabytes per second. The write is 7,000 megabytes per second. That may differ though, depending on the size of the SSD. A lot of times, if you go for a smaller size, you will get slower speeds. It does also mention on the back that it does include a heat sink, which I'm surprised it doesn't mention that on the front or even show a picture of it, because that would be a selling point for me. On the inside of the box, you've got the plastic casing, what it comes in, you've got the SSD as well. You've got a thermal pad for the heat sink, you've got the top of the heat sink, and you've got the back plate for the heat sink as well. You've got two ways to run the SSD. You can go bare bones, so no heat sink at all. You usually do that if you A, haven't got enough room in the device to put heat sink on it, or it's already got a built-in heat sink like a lot of the motherboards do what are on the market, especially the high-end ones like a Z690 board and so forth. Now, the other option is you put the heat sink on. That will, will fit in a PS5, and obviously any device uh, you can actually fit the heat sink on, I would suggest you put it on because these things can get hot usually and the extra cooling can actually help performance quite a bit especially when it's in usage for long periods. So if you're going to go with the heatsink on this assembly is very easy. Basics is you get the SSD in the back plate, you slide the SSD in the back plate, he says, there we go, you just slide it in like that. Just make sure there's enough room on the end for the connector to go into the port. And obviously also make sure there's enough room on the end here where the screw can go in, because if you push it too far, you block, you're blocking the screw hole. So you just need to get the balance right, okay? Once you've done that, you get the main part of the heat sink, turn it upside down, then obviously peel off the paste pads. So you just do one side, Obviously make sure you peel the plastic off because if you don't, you're going to have issues. And then when you've done that, the other side should, with ease-ish, peel off. So again, make sure you take off both pieces of plastic. Otherwise, this is going to do absolutely nothing. Once you've done that, you basically make sure you know which orientation the drive's going to be. So if it's going to go on your motherboard that way up, or it's going to connect up that way. Obviously, it really depends on the motherboard. Um, some obviously differ because they have multiple ports. You then obviously get this face in the correct way up so it looks right. It doesn't have to, but if you want a piece of written upside down inside the machine, then that's fine. You get the heat sink and push it down on top of the SSD and it should just clip in. It might be hard to see on both sides. And there you go. That is now fitted and in nice and snug. Now, if you decide to not have the heat sink on it, this is what it's going to look like. There isn't much in the way of model numbers or serial numbers on the top side. Bear in mind, this is the top side because of where the cut is uh, and the orientation. If you do flip it over, it does have the details on the bottom. I do like how they do that because you're hiding, obviously, the serial number away uh, if it is invisible sight, which uh, a lot of SSDs could learn from this, or should I say manufacturers of SSDs, because they like to stick model numbers and serial numbers over the top of everything which can make it look not the most appealing when it's inside your case and on show. Bear in mind, as we said, this is a PCIe Gen 4x4, which means make sure you've got a PCIe 4x4 motherboard or a socket on your motherboard, which will support this because otherwise it will not run at the full speed. This is rated at 7,400 megabytes per second, so that's the top end of PCIe Gen 4. Uh, if you've obviously got a motherboard on this supports PCIe Gen 3, then this will go at roughly 3,500 megabytes per second. So it's practically double the speed if you're running it at obviously uh, on the right sockets, on the right type of motherboard and so forth. So we've got the SSD installed in this machine. We're using this one to do basically a stress test on it, to test it to make sure there's no problems. We do a quick test first and then a full test. This is on a quick test at the moment, but basically the drive is there if you can see it. If you can't, you'll see it on the B-roll. It's a bit of a pain because obviously it's black on a black motherboard. Uh, the, this test PC, we're running a Z690 motherboard. It's an NZXT motherboard. 
the CPU is a Intel i7 13700K, so a real top end one. So, um, so what we do is run the test using Eurosoft PC Check UEFI. This is a paid for piece of software. It's what usually computer technicians use. So when you go take your machine to a computer repair shop, they'll use it for diagnostic or stress testing or system integrators, which are basically the ones who build computers for you. Um, they will actually use software like this to test their machines. We don't use the free stuff online for these because we find it's unreliable and can give contradicting results. So down to testing results. We used Crystal Dismark and we also used Atto as well. We did the test three times on each and we've got the average scores here. The machine is basically really high end. So it's a Threadripper 3960X, which is 24 cores, 48 threads. We've got 64 gig of RAM in there as well. GeForce 3070 graphics card and blah, blah, blah. Basically there's no limitations and we've tested uh, other SSDs with speeds up to and over 7,500 megabytes per second. So right, so let's get into what we've got on here. Using Crystal Disk Mark, we got a read speed of just over 7,000 megabytes per second and the write speed just under 7,000. So the write speed was quite a bit under what they stated, but again, it's, in reality, it's not that far. You'll probably never notice the speed difference. Uh, the write speed, not far off what they said. That's margin of error, error, to be honest with you. Using Atto, you do usually get slightly slower speeds, in all honesty. It was saying on the read on this, we were getting 6,510 megabytes per second. On the right, we were getting roughly 6,400 megabytes per second, maybe up and down a little bit there, but gives you a rough idea. While it was doing that, we got temperatures uh, going up to 55 degrees Celsius. That's with the heat sink on. We did test it with the heat sink off. The temperatures did go up to 68 degrees, but in all honesty, we didn't see much difference in performance. But again, if you've got a low airflow case or the SSD is hiding under something like the graphics card it could potentially get hotter so I would advise having the heatsink on or if your case or motherboard's already got a heatsink built into it then you use that instead but otherwise it did everything it should do don't get me wrong it was a little bit under the read but again that's nothing really to write home about to be honest with you it's uh, well within reason and I would be happy to go out and purchase one of these. I hope you enjoyed this video and know I did. Why not check out one of our other videos by clicking this box up here or this one just down here. Otherwise, you can give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment below, let us know what you think and we'll see you next time.